joined by the leader of Reform UK, Richard Tice, of course, former uh, chairman of the Brexit Party, he played a crucial role uh, in bringing us that extraordinary vote um, five years ago today where we voted to leave the European Union. Um, good morning to you, Richard Tice. Good morning, Good morning, Julia. How are you? I'm what very, an very well. Day. Can't believe it's taken so long. Five years. <laughs> Doesn't time fly when you're having fun? Now, Julia, I've got here. I've got here Winston Churchill's favourite champagne, Paul Roger. He would, you know. I mean, uh, the question is, Julia. Uh, the day depends on when I open it. The sooner I open it, the longer the day will be. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's a happy day. It is a happy day. So still, I genuinely, for me, waking up on the 24th of June, I decided to have a little bit of sleep. Still, still one of the happiest, happiest days of my life. And, and I put it up there in the top 10 with sort of wedding and, and daughter being born. And I don't care how sad people think it is. I thought it was such a great, wonderful day of people taking back control, quite literally, and saying, frankly, putting two fingers up uh, to the establishment who said, oh, no, no, almost to a man and a woman. Oh, every organisation, every international organisation, everybody, everybody, oh, no, this is going to be a terrible decision and you mustn't do it and you're all making silly mistakes and everyone went nah well not everyone 52 percent of us went nah we'll, we'll, we'll do what we think is right um took us a very long time to get here um uh, we've only we only actually saw i mean i spoke at you know a couple of your big rallies when we you know we had multi-party uh, cross-party rallies where uh, we didn't get the, the leaving date we've been promised and then we the night we actually did i was on stage as the band played and we had the bongs of the yeah. band and we and 11 p.m on the 31st january we actually left um but um it, we, we we still we still seem to be mired in talk about Brexit. I look at the BBC website. Their second section on their website, you know, before coronavirus for most of the year, has been Brexit. We only actually finally left at the beginning of this year. Um, how long do you think this is going to hang over us? Oh, I think for some people, uh, you know, they'll never stop. And that look, that's fine. That's democracy. But for most people, actually, uh, you know, it's done. There was a huge sense of relief, and we've got to move on. And of course the extraordinary unexpected first Brexit success was the ability to actually uh, order and approve and instigate our own vaccine programme. So, you know, Brexit literally saved lives much earlier uh, than across the rest of Europe. That was it. That's just one of the many benefits of being in control, having sovereignty, you know, literally uh, being able to run the country well, as we on see the, On the technicality, Richard, we could have done that within the auspices of the EU, yes, yes. but we probably wouldn't have because the, the clearly the pressure, even the countries that have started doing those orders and contracts with AstraZeneca and with uh, Pfizer, exactly. they, yeah, but, they then backed off and, and the EU took over. And I think there would have been a lot of pressure on us to do the same. Of course, look, we, we, we know what bullies the EU are. Uh, it's interesting is the evidence is not one of the other 27 countries took control of their own vaccine program. In fact, Germany and a couple of others uh, wanted to and were literally bullied to go back into the centre. So we know which way that would have gone. Um, so I, I've no doubt at all uh, that that's been a huge benefit to us. There are still issues to resolve. There always will be in a way because, you know, trade arrangements between nations, they're never static. You're always trying to improve them. So, of course, you know, we're negotiating trade deals all over the world. And we have got a couple of key issues where real strength is needed to resolve the problems in Northern Ireland, which, you know, those of us, we kept highlighting that problem with Boris's deal. Uh, we continue to highlight it last year and, and, and this year, and, and we always will. And likewise, fishing has been sold well, down the river. So there's a lot of work to be done, Julia, for sure. Well, indeed. I mean, yesterday, the Brexit minister, Lord Frost, uh, told the Foreign Affairs Select Committee of the Commons, it's hard to see how the Northern Ireland protocol can remain sustainable in its current form. What is going to happen there? I very much hope that they will ditch it in its entirety. It's unsustainable. It's causing huge economic and societal uh, damage and real tension uh, in uh, in Northern Ireland. And you know the EU is is they're playing games. I mean they, they've already imposed, albeit for a matter of hours, a hard border between uh, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. We know we know the games they play, and we've got to be strong. And it's it's not working because of the way they're interpreting it. So in the ditching, we've got to have that courage uh, and then we can resolve their issues. They need 
to know we are one united kingdom. President Macron seemed to forget that a few weeks ago. Well, let, let me bring in Afia Adam, who's a journalist and broadcaster. And, and Afia, you, you mentioned a little bit earlier on the show, you voted Remain, but absolutely accept the democratic uh, mandate of the British people. And interestingly, there's a poll uh, out today. Well, of course there is. If the vote was rerun now, the result would be a narrow win for Remain, 51% to 49%. But I imagine a lot of those Remainers, Afia, who, who didn't, uh, didn't uh, accept the original vote, the Ramonas, as I've been dubbing them, uh, many of them in Parliament, uh, they would say, even though they they think 52% wasn't a big enough win, that 51% remain would be just fine, wouldn't they? And I also think that if, you know, if that vote had happened and it did go the other side, we would still be having so much discussion about it. It would still yes. be on a knife oh, edge still, and it would yeah. still mean that virtually half the country did or did not want it to happen. It was always going to be a very tight race. And I think maybe we didn't anticipate how tight that it would be. And I think, you know, we would still have this issue where we would still be discussing it over and over oh, again. Oh, yeah, forever, like forever, said, Afia, forever. Yes. Can I you know, Can I just come in there? I want to ask you both, actually, whether you have um, uh, going to be celebrating uh, One Britain, One Nation Day on Friday. Richard, are you celebrating that? Oh, well, I mean, I'm always happy to celebrate One Britain, One Nation. It's, it's, it's an extraordinary song, isn't it? Now, that's I'm, the thing I'm, I was... I'm now, let me... It. You've gone a little bit ahead of me. This is where I want to uh, I want to introduce my lovely listeners who have better things to do than sit on Twitter all the time than, than we do. Um, and introduce you to this... There is a whole thing. There's an organisation called One Britain, One Nation. Um, they are, uh, um, I think I've got the right, yeah, OBON. Uh, they are going to be uh, celebrating One Britain, One Nation Day on Friday. No, I hadn't heard of it either. And they've got a whole song for children to sing at school to celebrate this day on Friday. Let's have a little bit of a listen. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, let's have a little bit of a watch of the video as well. This is quite extraordinary. Anyway, I, I think that's probably all you want to hear. But um, Richard Tice, your reaction to that song? Look, I think the great thing is, Julia, you've got lots of Union Jacks everywhere. We've got children in the same place and they're laughing, they're smiling. And guess what, Julia? They're singing. I mean, just oh, they're imagine allowed to do children that? being allowed to sing. It's an extraordinary thing. Who would have guessed it? Um, Afia, what do you make of it? That's a bit terrifying, isn't it, really? <laughs> are we, I mean, are we going to war? Have I missed something? It just, you know, wow. Yeah, I that think was, wow. I think wow is the reaction. Just wow, finally. Yes. Um, just finally, we are going to get Richard. I want to ask you about that decision last night. Football, great night for England. Uh, not well, an OK, an, an OK ish night for England, a terrible night for Scotland, of course. But we know that the semi finals and the final of the uh, UEFA champion, U Euro Championships are going to be held at Wembley because the government's going to give in to the demand to allow 3,000 VIPs into the country without the quarantine restrictions, which they insist are absolutely vital for the rest of us. What do you make of that decision? Oh, the hypocrisy is utterly outrageous, absolutely. And it won't be 3,000, Juliet, it'll be five, six, or 7,000. We all know that. Frankly, people need to take it as it is and say, I'm going to make my own risk-based judgments. It's utterly hypocritical and outrageous, and it's got to stop. Richard Tice, leader of Reform UK, thank you very much indeed. So